It is our pleasure to welcome in a man who, frankly, is back where he belongs, calling BYU basketball games on ESPN. He'll be in Provo tonight, Jerem. (laughs) He was calling Oregon, Utah State last night, and the Ducks beat the Aggies. Yes, they did. I know there are mixed emotions about that. Roxy Bernstein (laughs) is with us on BYU Sports Nation. From Logan to Provo, the tour of Utah continues. Roxy, nice to have you back calling a BYU game. It's about time they let me back at the Marriott Center. For some reason, they just haven't been letting me come to Provo. I I don't know. I don't know if you guys had something to do with that. I did. Uh, You know, I heard a complaint from concessions. They said that they've never seen anyone eat three cougar tails in a single sitting, (laughs) and they thought that was pretty weird. Yeah, but I thought the outweighing from Shirley's down the street Uh might uh allow me to come back. But I, you know, do you have an NIL I couldn't handle with red iguana and Shirley's yet, or what? We, well, it's all legal. It was always been legal with me. It's not like they were paying me to be an athlete. Yes. You, you guys would know that would not go very well for those sponsorships. <laughs> I know. People were like, do you guys have NILs? We're like, no one cares. No, nobody okay? cares. Nobody, nobody, yeah. cares. Well, nobody cares. Yeah. yeah, you're an economy booster, Roxy, and that's that's what matters most. <laughs> also, very uh, true. Yes. Let's, let's get to the actual game. You were calling, as Jeremy mentioned, Oregon's win over Utah State and Logan last night. Now you get BYU and Long Beach State. What type of game do you expect from these two teams? Because BYU is who knows what we're going to get, and they're facing an up-tempo, perhaps motivated Long Beach State team. So what are you expecting tonight? I'm curious to see what we get from Long Beach State, just because the heartbreak that they had losing by a point in the Big West Championship on Saturday night. Corey Williams and I, who have the game tonight, had the Big West Final. And they had an opportunity to win it. They had the ball down one with about 20 seconds to go. And they couldn't, they didn't get a shot off that last sequence. Oh. So it had to be frustrating. Look, congratulations to Cal State Fullerton, Deidre Taylor. Their reward for being Long Beach State is trying to get Mike Krzyzewski's way and trying to end his career <laughs> uh, in, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. But this is an athletic, quick Long Beach State team. They're going to spread you out. They're going to go five out at times. They're going to try to isolate you. It's They're going to play a lot of one-on-one, and they're going to try to force Temple a little bit, turn BYU over. But we have two great guards that are going to be on display tonight with, obviously, Barcelo from BYU. But Colin Slater is a gifted scorer, the Big West Player of the Year for Long Beach State. I'm always interested in the NIT, not at the talent, but at the motivation, which is hard to gauge exactly. Do you ever get a sense in calling NIT games this year and other years of, okay, I can tell this team is in this because some teams uh, aren't, and my hope is that BYU is tonight. They're in it. Well, it it is about, Jerem, what you're saying. Who wants to play? And I was concerned about Oregon yesterday, to be honest with you, right? Oregon comes in. They had a disappointing end of the season. They were down two starters last night. Will Richardson and Enfale Dante didn't play. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to get here from Oregon? And Dane Altman rest assured us early at shoot around yesterday that his kids are motivated. They want to play. And I think some of the younger guys in the team wanted an opportunity to show what they could do to earn some time and getting good graces for next year. So there's that potential. Also, I would expect both teams to be motivated tonight. I've seen both ends of it. If you talked about, I remember a year Cal was a one seed in the NIT. And they had, and they got, just got left out of the field. They had zero, I mean, zero interest <laughs> in playing in the NIT. Now, physically, they were there. But it was when Ivan Rabb was there. Ivan said, I'm not playing. I'm, I'm looking for the draft. Conzo Martin had, had a foot out the door already to go to Missouri. And it was just, uh, just a mess. And Bakersfield was a team that wanted to play. And crazy Bakersfield made a run to New York and Madison square garden as an eight seed. So you're exactly right. Who wants to play is about the NIT and who gets a taste of it and wants to go to New York. And I would expect both teams look BYU knew they weren't going to be in on selection Sunday, Long Beach state clearly knew they weren't going to be in. So they're going to be motivated to compete and play for another championship. ESPN's Roxy Bernstein with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars are an 11 or 12 point favorite, depending on which friend you're talking to in Las Vegas. Why do you think BYU has been labeled as a double digit favorite in this type of game? Number one, they're at home and Long Beach State having to travel to come out to Provo and deal with some altitude, which they normally don't have to deal with. I think factors in. 
that BYU's the better team. They've shown it over the course of the season and playing in what is considered a really good league this year with certainly Gonzaga. And you look at the other teams, St. Mary's, USF, uh, in the NCAA tournament. But with the matchup is the one, like, I, I don't know physically how Long Beach State inside will deal with Caleb Lohner and Fustini Traore, even though the Long Beach State has their own Traore they oh, can lean on. Okay. But the size advantage and the physicality, I think, will play into account also. And just what, what BYU, I think, will set the tone with tonight. Our question of the day on the show is, what can BYU do to redeem this season after making the NCAA tournament in the NIT, if anything at all? How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's for these guys competing, Jerem, for a championship. If they can go to New York and advance and get to Madison Square Garden, look, they don't have to necessarily win it. But to me, what they've been through this season in terms of the injuries, when you lose Gavin Baxter like they did early in the year and certainly the Richard Harwood situation, it, it made it challenging. And it was a year of growth for the young guys like Traore, like Atiki Ali Atiki, um, for Kayla Lohner to make that next step. So it was a group for BYU, I think, that was trying to find themselves as the season went on. And, and Mark Pope had to reimagine this team, right? Early in the season, they had some size. They had they thought it was going to be some depth. But then the unfortunate situation with Harward, then the injury to Baxter. And all of a sudden, Mark Pope had to figure out a different way for this team to win. And he did. So it's been a work in progress all year. And I, I think it's about building this team for the future. Look, Alex Barcelo needs to be celebrated for a brilliant career, but it's also about a group that's moving forward and what's going to be for BYU next season. We're talking with Roxy Bernstein, and you already mentioned the Big West Player of the Year and Colin Slater at Long Beach State. Are there any other players specifically that BYU fans need to be aware of when they show up at the Marriott Center and be paying close attention to when it comes to the Cougars' opponent tonight? Yeah, uh, Slater's not the only dynamic scorer, Spencer, that, that Long Beach State has. Uh, when you look at Joel Murray, he can really fill it up. He leads the Big West in scoring, even though Slater was the player of the year. Um, Jadon Jones, a very good defender uh, who can shoot threes. In fact, he hit a miraculous three to win it for uh, Long Beach State against UC Santa Barbara Friday night in the semifinals when Long Beach State trailed for the majority of that game. Um, but it's an athletic team, and Dan Munson, look, he's no stranger to postseason play, and you know, he was the guy, believe it or not, yes, there was a coach at Gonzaga before Mark Few. It was <laughs> Dan Munson. Yes, they did exist before Mark Few. And no. Dan Munson, believe it or not, took Gonzaga to the Elite Eight and bounced. And you don't think Munson looks in the mirror every morning? Did I make the right decision? <laughs> Gosh, dang it. He, he took the money and went to Minnesota. And all of a sudden, Gonzaga turned into a national power. So, wow, crazy. You know. The grass isn't always greener, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's greener in terms of money, but not uh, greener in terms of production. Um, let, let's talk about uh, the NIT history of BYU. I'm sure you know if you don't, now you know. 51 and 66 championships. I feel like that has to come up tonight. Also, you need to drop, uh, you know, a Roland Minson mention. He was the star point guard on the 51 team. Will that happen tonight? Will Roland Minson get mentioned in the broadcast? I'm going to highly doubt it. And I know you're trying to plant the seed right now. Bro! If I can weave it in, we'll see. Yeah. I, I'm the sure his family can get would some appreciate shots. it. Have retired jerseys. This is an easy comeback from break situation here. It's an easy. Well, let's let's revisit the 1951 NIT championship for the BYU Cougars. <laughs> Corey, what are your thoughts on Roland Vincent? <laughs> Listen, it's Bill. Super one, easy. One time, Bill said when BYU was rolling in a regular season game, I think it was with you. It was against Utah in like four or five years ago. He said, "That's Roland Minson basketball." And the BYU fans know Roland Minson. Were like, "Dude, Bill knows. Bill knows." So, okay, if you don't well, want to Bill's take it, here. that's fine. <laughs> he clearly isn't because we're having a rational, sane conversation. <laughs> We'd have all types of references from Bill tonight. We wouldn't get enough Danny Ainge. Uh, Krasimir Kosic. I mean, we'd, yeah, we'd yep. be on and on and on with Bill and his affinity for BYU basketball. I was really hoping you'd mention Roland Minson. I'm pretty disappointed right now. I'll be honest, Rox. Roxy, don't don't feel hey, the maybe I'll keep you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what we call a tease in television, my friends. 
Uh, we've taken far too much of your time. You need to get on the road so that you can hit some of your restaurant hotspots in time to get the Provo and then do this basketball game, Roxy. Shirley's, here I come. Let's go. <laughs> have those cinnamon rolls ready. Look for Roxy at lunch. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Roxy. Uh, great to have you back you on guys. the call here at BYU. We'll talk to you tonight. See you tonight. Look forward to it. Roxy Bernstein of ESPN.